Hello and welcome to the Tech Lunch Podcast, where we encourage our listeners to learn something new about tech every week. This can range from learning about new and exciting te- applications to the advancements in coding and technology. If you are always learning, you will always be a step above the rest. Take the time during lunch or during a break to listen and learn, kind of like a lunch and learn, but for the years. This podcast will open the listeners' ears to new and exciting technologies they may have not been purviewed to in the past. These topics will range from manufacturing technologies to data collection technologies and everything in between. Hello, I'm Nick. Hey, I'm John. And, you know, this week we are missing Ed. Um, he is actually, ironically, you know, working on something that we're going to be talking about in this project. I mean, yeah. this, this, yeah. this this episode, he's doing a hackathon. So, you know, he's doing training for that for this weekend for Capture the Flag event, you know, here in our local area. You know, that's something else I, I like people to get involved in. You know, go out there and enjoy these things, be a spectator, or be a fly on the wall. You know, kind of watch how they're doing, yeah. you know, these, these Capture the Flag events. And, you know, maybe next week we'll get him to tell us how that Capture the Flag event went. Yeah, I think that that's a good idea. I think it's also funny that, it, that how ironic it is that we would talk about this too, because yeah. um, <laughs> Ed would want to be here too to, to to kind of talk about that. So right. we're probably going to talk about it a little bit it'll, again. It'll next probably week. be a part two next week. But <laughs> yeah. you know, this week we're going to kind of get into your um, your security side of the house. Yeah. You know, and if you think about it, you know, information technology security or cybersecurity side of the house is a multifaceted, multi layered approach. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So a lot of people, I, so think about it from the outside looking in, um, before like myself, you know, before I got into IT, everybody's saying cybersecurity is growing. You, like they, people are, you know, you probably hear it on the, on the radio, on the TV, like you know, yeah. on the internet, you're probably, Hey, cybersecurity, uh, majors, uh, or, or graduates are in high demand. Um, but you see PI if you're in what, the U S yeah. What, what is that? But what does that completely mean, right? Right, and that's and that's the question that, like, I mean, personally, I would like to answer. So if I'm if I'm talking to my family, if we talk about cybersecurity, they're not going to know where to start asking questions. Mm-hmm. So, like, w- what does so when you're thinking cybersecurity from from just a basic IT standpoint, um, how how would you think about it? Is it is it a tiered approach, like a one, two, three? Is it is it just pure topics like this kind of exists outside of, um, let's say, like encryption exists outside of like protection or something like that? Well, technically that doesn't, yeah. but but you know what I'm saying. Like right. the basic idea is is that you could have groupings exist, you know, outside of each other, but still connect to the main, you I, know, main I, theme I see of it as security. A, I see it the fact is you have, it's a multi layered approach. Yeah. You know, you starting from your outside, working your way in. If you're trying to, you know, peel back that banana. No. You know, or the artichoke, if you really want to go that deep into it. It'd probably no. just be the artichoke. So you would start, you know, when you come in the building, you're coming through the ISP router. From the ISP router to, which is your internet router, by the way. Um, from your ISP router to your firewall. Mm-hmm. You know, once you get your, your outbound firewall rule, it's saying, hey, what am I allowed in and out? So it, sort of, it starts funneling. You know, through that stuff, going through the VPNs and stuff like that. Your mm-hmm. data is being cycled through there. It's going through proxies, you know. So the proxies are, are filtering out stuff that it doesn't need. It's blocking stuff that's not allowed on that particular network. And then, you know, once you start going through there, each individual, you know, leg of that network has its own firewall getting down to where it needs to be. Right. You know, like you have, if you're dealing with an IoT environment, you're going to have your IoT network that comes in your main distribution switch. And then that switch can be VLAN out, and that those VLANs are another another uh, security point. You don't know yeah. where it's going to go. And the thing is, is you can have ports turned off, ports turned on. That's your a different layer of security. Mm-hmm. But then it'd be okay. Cool. I need to send this leg, you know, say VLAN sixteen, out to my IoT server or my IoT network. I'm going to hit a firewall before I make it to that that, that network, and then I'm going to break down into individual devices. Okay. And then if I'm coming into the admin's network. It's going to come through there. It's going to hit another firewall. It's going to break from that firewall down into the, you know, the, the working areas and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And the same thing if you're dealing with a shop floor. But your shop floor, you get a little bit more in depth where you start going from your uh, main firewall to a 
uh, secured shop floor firewall to a, um, um, you know, a scalant switch, you know, at the PLC, at the, at the yep. PLC zone, you know, inside of its zone. So it's protected before it even gets down to the robots. And even those robots have some sort have a, have an encryption and protection on board. So there's several, several, you know, half dozen, honestly, firewalls that you have to get through several layers that you're going through to get to, you know, to get that data to, you know, the end goal yeah. of the robot, yeah. right? And it's like you talk about like on a regular laptop or somebody or like, you know, like the IoT side of the house, you're dealing yeah. with different levels of encryption based on your devices. Yeah. Communication standards are different. See, yeah. And that's exactly, that's exactly the point I was going to get to is like, so like these firewalls exist, but also there are credentials that need to be matched based on, you know, you can use based it on um, like Act- Active Directory, yeah. like Windows Shaws and hash uh, yeah, marks and stuff things like, like that. that. So you can even add more layers of security. So so that that's a great way to kind of explain it. Um, and that idea, like I think what Adam Savage did, what a uh, 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 aluminum foil one time, and yep. he was talking about packing down the layers, and yep. he kept packing it down. It was like Maybe it was a two shiny full, ball. yeah, two full rolls like of like twenty six square foot aluminum foil, and he's packing it down. But he learned that. Because he didn't pack it down as he went, at the end of it, there was a hard outer shell and a, let's say, more arid or aerated, like, whole, like holy gyroidal looking mm-hmm. uh, infill. So, for that, that I, I kind of take that thing and, and, and that is a great analogy for, like, like security levels. Yeah. So, like, we, we start compiling a lot of the things on the firewall is, like, most likely going to be that outer shell. But if you start packing on the inside before you end up putting the fire sh- the fire um, firewall uh, rules in place, you can make it that much more secure, yeah. that much more compact, and and you can you can get that density more. You're dealing uh, with on device security and stuff like that. Yeah, so that that's a great way to kind of that I can kind of think about it and yeah. visualize what that looks like. If you guys haven't seen that video, it's pretty cool. You should go watch Adam Adam Savage has tested. It's it, he's he's a crazy man. Uh, yeah. and, and he does a lot of cool projects, a lot of messes with a lot of tech, a lot of hands-on tech. So, and, and then watch the video where he sends it to the, um, uh, the water jet guys. Yeah. And the water jet guys cut it open. Yeah. Um, but you know, like, you know, we talk about that infill, you're starting to talk about like on device security or, or like yeah. MDM, you know, if you're mobile device security and stuff like that, if you're dealing with like in tune based software and stuff like that on board, you know, cell phones or whatnot. Using that Microsoft even count packages. for like two factor authentication right. as well. You know, yeah. Like. Things like that. Um, then you start dealing with like the use of different like CA certs and SSH and SSL certs and stuff like that that you're dealing with. And then you're also dealing with the application itself, you know, password vaults and stuff like that that you're dealing with. Yeah. You know, getting through that. Then you start dealing with domain level security, you know, your LDAP servers. Yeah. Um, and also your basic namespace, you know, servers that you'd be dealing with in like your IoT environment, like your MQTT stuff, you're dealing in packet based security. Which your your hash marks have to match for that for that topic. Yeah. The topic has to match inside its application package. No. You know, and then once you start dealing with like what sometimes what I start to deal with is start dealing with the SSOs, single sign your single sign ons yeah. that control your application login for multiple applications inside one SSO. And you know, so it's like every single different page of that application is tied to that SSO that allows you what you can and cannot do you get into it you know it's it's your basic roles and responsibilities and it's like if you start looking at your different certifications you know like security plus or cissp and stuff like that you start dealing inside those realms yeah you know and and pretty much that realm is you know iam you know identity and access management um and so you start dealing with all your different ssos your different sign-ons and all that other stuff and how you tie those together so like in your sso i would put that I can only get to this website if I have this login. Yeah. So I so so all of these websites redirect back to my login page, back to the SSO login page. Mm-hmm. I would log in and it would finally let me on. Um, you know, with that, I highly recommend people go deal with Keycloak. Yeah. You know, learn Keycloak. Um, if anything, spin it up in a Docker image. Yeah. Um, and throw it on a Wildfly instance because they have those, and then turn your entire application landscape into into an SSO based you know, role and responsibility area. You know, you could play with the same thing. And you, then with that, you can do local credentials. You don't have to do, 
don't have to tie it to an LDAP server, so you don't have to have an LDAP server available. Right. Um, you just have to have that server available, which is which is kind of funny. You know, we start dealing with SSOs and LDAPs and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You start dealing with even your smaller things in the world can be SSO. You know, and logic broken, and, and, and you know, logic yeah, even down to a, a Raspberry Pi, right? Right, like, exactly. Yeah. If you think about it, um, you know, Mainsail, which is a system that I use uh, for my Clipper-based printers that I have at the house, all of those can be hidden behind a firewall. All of those can be hit. Well, technically, they're hidden behind a firewall, yeah. But because they're VPNed out, and they're not allowed out in the open world. So you just add an extra shell, right. like yeah. you can add an extra layer, put it all behind an SSO. <laughs> so that means every single one of your printers is now blocked. So from the outside world. Yeah. So a lot of what we've we've been talking about so far is is outlining kind of, you know, what cybersecurity like actually is, but we I, I'm hearing a lot of firewall this, you know, credentials that, uh but at the end of the day, it, it's it sounds very complicated, right? right? It sounds like there's so many things that I'm kind of creating to get this secure, but the end goal isn't to lock you out no it's to lock somebody else out it's to lock someone else out from like well prior prior to cybersecurity being so huge how, how easy was it to get into people's emails i just yeah. needed to know your password right, right. And you know what about two-factor authentication uh, and if i before before two-factor if i don't know if i don't know if i know let's say a couple things about you mm-hmm. those are most likely your security questions that was our cybersecurity was yeah hey what was your first pet's name was your third grade teacher's name? Right. All right. What's your mom's maiden name? Now, if I grew up with you, our answers are the same. Like, if you're my sibling, our answers are the same. Yeah. So right. I could get your password. Yeah, and that's also before you know you had to deal with you know ransomware. Yeah. When you know if you really wanted to stop the connection for your ransomware, it's answer the phone. You know because you're dealing with dial-up and AOL, or just wait till you run out of minutes. You know, and guess what? You don't have to worry about that no more. Yeah. Um, it's a very different time now. <laughs> you know, yeah. Your, your game on your PC is Oregon Trail. Yeah. Um, wow. And you, you know. died of dysentery. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it happens. You know, and never, no one ever made it across. <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> um, most of the time it was dysentery yeah. or you got attacked by somebody. Dysentery. That's what You know, it just it just really depends on where you're at and usually some old Texas someplace. Yeah. Um, which reminds me of never going there because I'm not only go die of dysentery. Yeah, um, no, I'm not walking that trail. You, you can keep it. I'm good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, back, 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 back on topic. Well, probably not. Yeah. yeah. Eventually, well, but I'm just, we'll I'm just there. using as, as a, as a, like a, as an example to, to kind of, it doesn't have to be as complicated. It is very complicated right. judging from where we've, where we've come from without any mm-hmm. of these, like, um, you know, restrictions. It was very easy to, yeah. You know, take your data. I like you're talking about ransomware. Like, what about another one? Man in the middle attacks. Like, yeah. you're literally just putting a listener in the middle of your you sending your data back and forth. So, right. like, it's like key loggers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's perfect. If I can log, yeah, that's a great example too. If I could log every keystroke that you make, why can't I know your password? Right. You just typed it for me. <laughs> and it's 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 like you know you start you really dealing with some of those like you know more intricate you know different types of attacks and stuff like that and but the funny thing is is most of your most of your easy stuff is just 95 percent of the fact that somebody hit a button yeah it allows them yeah that's also i mean also social engineering i mean that's that's you know your phishing email you hit that button you let it in it's like and the funny part is i don't know why and this is what happens when you own a windows machine which god forbid if you do i'm sorry because i do we all do people yeah Mm -hmm. and i'd like to get away from it eventually that's why i use linux yeah um I, I don't know why, but Windows Defender Firewall is great um, for what you need. You can open up ports, close yeah. ports, do what you got to do with ports, right? Makes it pretty However, easy. Windows Defender for your security side house where it scans your laptop is great. It, it it's awesome. However, these new darn laptops are being are being sold with Norton antivirus on the damn thing, and as soon as you run run out of your subscription, it starts spamming you. Yeah. You know, so I have to go in there and delete it. Yeah. You know, uninstall it, remove delete it. Delete the notification. And stuff like that. Yeah. And, you know, you just don't want to deal with them anymore. And yeah. then, you know, like I said, I deal with Linux. So I deal with a lot of Red Hat-based Linux systems. Guess what you can't have on Linux? No one's figured yeah. out how to do viruses yet. No. Some people have. Some people figured out how to crack the code. However, it's also one of the very few systems that I just have to delete one file and I no longer have access to the internet. Yeah, Exactly. 
So yeah, it's pretty, cool, thanks. And it's pretty easy to see that even even in command line interface, you yeah. can you can see all those files and and delete that one that you know lets you connect. Yeah. Right. And so it's you know no one's made a Norton for Linux yet. Yeah. You know, and, and by the way, if you know the story of uh, what is it, McAfee or Norton? Mac- that was absolutely insane. McAfee is absolutely insane, yeah, and I McAfee couldn't guy. stop watching his. His documentary. <laughs> His documentary, and I was like, yeah. this guy's absolutely crazy, but... Which is 95% of the people you see in cybersecurity, they're all worried about somebody trying to follow them around. Yeah, 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 you're, like, you're, your entire life is devoted to, like, you know, trying to keep these secrets and things like that. You're never yeah. really going to feel like people are trying to get your secrets, <laughs> like... Right, you, you know, it's, you know, everybody, everybody crazy. put your tinfoil hat on and, you know, let's go for a run. Yeah, I don't know if that was necessarily his problem, but I definitely think Came he needed a, needed a tinfoil <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he belonged to the tenfold. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, but um, I digress. But but no, yeah. He, I mean, the, the, you, you're making a good point um, because, like, first off, I want to do a disclaimer. Don't go online and search free antivirus. You, most of those are malware. Because what's yeah. the easiest way to get you? This is what we were talking about: social engineering. Right. So like that was gonna that's that bring me to the other part of 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 security because. Why do I need to hack your computer? That sounds hard. Yeah. Why don't I hack you as a person? Right. Why don't I send you an email? Phishing. You know, yeah, phishing and say, hey, I need, I'm a jet Nigerian prince. I need $700,000 to pay for this and uh, for, to pay for my trip to America or yeah. whatever. And, and I mean, that's a absorbent amount of money. But if I said a couple hundred dollars and someone's like, oh, I can help this guy. Yeah. sending it to you like i promise if you help me now i'll pay you back tenfold like when, yeah. once i get there and, and mind you if anybody attempts this on us we will melt your hard drive yeah don't do that you know um so you know that's a scam <laughs> yeah that's a scam uh, you know, that, that's illegal in all countries don't around the world that. except for a couple um but you know it, it's just the thing is this fishing is that is a 90 percent way of people getting into your computer yeah, if someone mm-hmm. asks you to pay them in gift cards, don't do it. That's not legit. <laughs> yeah, and, and don't don't click on the you know the the thing that says you want a prize when you know you're looking at the website and it says like you know yahooligans dot com. You know you you don't know what yahooligans dot com is. You know it doesn't mean Yahoo. Yeah, All right. No. Um, yeah, read your URL. No, I'm one of the very few people these days are still using Yahoo email. Yeah, well. You know, I think they changed the Y mail now. I, I I think I still have an AOL AIM mail too. Oh I believe, God. if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I had a Netscape for a while. Yeah, <laughs> that's old. But it's like you know, it, it, it's one of those things of where you know you are the de- are, are the protector of your own data. Yeah. You know, if you want to let somebody in there and do that, you be my guest. And now, and ignorance does not yeah. is not enough. Just not not knowing to not know. Yeah. You know, like for guided. example, you know, my dad. It's my dad. Yeah. However, he sent me an email today. He says, I didn't know you spent this much on PayPal. I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm cheap. I don't spend that much on PayPal. Yeah. You know, I'm like, what'd you do? He goes, well, I clicked on the bot. I clicked on the email and opened the email up. Did you log in? He goes, no. I'm like, good. Would you open it up on? Oh, my phone. Okay. Well, you have an, you have an Android phone anyways. I'm not worried about it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's one of those things, but it's like, just don't click, don't log in and it won't yeah. steal your shit. Like no, and that's and that's that's a legitimate yeah. concern. And though. I'm I'm gonna tell you this, you know, if you are in the tech community, for the love of God, please take care of your parents, your grandparents, your nieces, your nephews, all those people who kind of don't understand this type of stuff. Make them aware of it, because if you don't do that now, they're gonna fall victim to these people that are calling them and asking them if they need tech support. Okay, mm-hmm. they don't. You know, have them call you if you they think something's yeah. awry. You know, I, I can't tell you how many times I've seen scammers get on people's freaking computers and steal their shit. You right, know, and, right in front of them, and right in front of them, and you see on you see it on you see it online on YouTube all the time. There's people fighting those people. Yeah. You know, and I'm going to tell you right now, if you are one of those people, and you are listening to our podcast, do me a favor, stop, because yeah, do we don't want anything to do with you. Yeah. Um. You know. Um. So just we'll leave it at that. However, you know, protect your loved ones. You know, teach them about cybersecurity. Te- teach them of why we do what we do. Yeah. You know, why you protect your certain things. It's very easy to, like, you know, when you're connecting to the Internet, risk is, is always there. Yeah. 
just because what's like on the internet and it because like you know honestly there's no filter you can write like if you can write an html like you pay for a domain mm -hmm. whatever you're putting up there like as long as as long as nobody is like i guess reporting it to certain like you know, overarching commissions or whatever, then you pretty much can put whatever you want yeah, you on. Got a, you got a loaded email. Yeah, and you if got you a loaded loaded web page. Yeah, if you want to lock it, lock it down to where nobody else can see what it says, but like a few people, y you can probably get by a, a little bit longer underneath. The, you know, the veil of of That's the secrecy. mass, the mass, yeah, the secrecy, the massive internet, as it were. There's so many URLs. You, nobody's coming through every single page, right? They, they go off of what's getting reported. But, like, at the same coin is you need to let people know the risks of connecting to the Internet where you have the, you know, have all knowledge at your fingertips, but also so does every other person that wants to take everything you've ever earned. Right. Because they don't want to work for it. This this is, they, they want you work. They want you to work for it so they can take it. Mm -hmm. now, at the end of the day, like, you, you just need to make sure that those most susceptible are, are not, you know, bringing themselves to ruin financially because you weren't, you know, ready to help them. Like, that's yeah. that's your family. My mom almost paid, she almost paid $12,000 to a government agency that didn't have any, like, we called them, and they had no record of sending this bill, and it was on official letterhead. It was official, like, account numbers. Mm-hmm. I'm not like I don't I'm not accusing anybody of like I'm not saying it's an inside job but I'm saying all of this was very official to where it looked like fuck oh excuse me we owe a lot of money yeah. like that's that's the first thought is like I we owe a lot of money we need to pay this back and I call them and I need to set up a payment plan so that I don't you know make this make right. me go financially ruined like so once we called them and they found out that it was a fake like they put out a, a public message and said hey don't pay this back thank you for thank you for finding that like this is something we need to address and investigate but your account is good yeah so that that's that's something the due diligence and just taking care of those people like without without those people like a lot of us wouldn't be where we are yeah. so why, and, why don't you help them out you know the other thing is it's like you know once we get past the doom and gloom um, you know, the yeah. thing is, is, you know, cybersecurity can actually be kind of fun. You know, you get to learn new technologies and stuff like that, you know, kind of learn, you know, tradecraft, you know, learn a trade, yeah. you know, it's, it's probably one of the most blue collar things you can do in IT. Yeah. Well, there's you ethical know, hacking too. Like, right. yeah. again, you're in blue collar cause you're actually, you're actively doing work. Yeah. You know, you're in, you know, or network specialists and stuff like that, you know, putting up these networks and stuff like that. Some of them are blue collar guys. Yeah. Some of them, ninety five percent of them, the ones I work with are all white collar guys. Yeah. You know, they, they, they get upset when they're doing their fingernails. Yeah. So, you know I'm not calling anybody out if you're listening. Um the thing is is you know, be one of the ones that like to get your, get your hands dirty. Well, Go if out the there. shoe fits, I mean <laughs> Right, exactly. You know, be one of those guys who goes out there and put installs the switches, programs the switches. You know, get your hands dirty on the shop floors and having fun with it. Send up firewalls and you know, getting and getting, you know, nitty and gritty with it. You know, when learning it, it's like, you know, so it, it can be fun. You know, it's not, it's yeah. not all, you know, doom and gloom and, you know, tinfoil hats and, yeah, you know, like, the aliens are coming to eat my brain. Um, or you know, somebody magically got probed yeah. on the outside of freaking Phoenix. They'll be I here. don't know. They'll be here eventually. You know, <laughs> you know, we are the reasons why they don't come come down here. Okay. <laughs> because they honestly probably listen to this podcast and yeah, we're not going to talk about those people. We don't need um, those guys. <laughs> you know. <laughs> It make no sense to us. That mean it makes yeah, no sense to them. Exactly. But you know, it is what it is. You know. But the other thing is, it's like be prepared for when you do deploy something, even in your own house, mm -hmm. that you don't act to accidentally open yourself up to an oops. Yeah, I think. And that I, goes back to our three D printers because yeah, exactly that's one of the easiest things. You're setting it up with a like you have a Raspberry Pi if you're doing a project on and you open it up to SSH and someone can get into your I, your, your network and, and just bounce across your house. Yeah, and if you're setting it default to that SSH like they boom, now they're on that computer. What do you have connected to that? Oh you have a second one? Boom, now they're on that computer. Oh they're all tied to they send you emails, boom, I'm in your email now. Yeah. Like th these are these are steps that if you aren't covering your tracks you're just leaving yourself open. Yeah, use VPNs. Um, that's what I do. Um, you know, you can set up your different layers. Like I, I use Ubiquity uh, stuff that you know I absolutely love yeah. it. Um, great firewalls, great VPNs, great APs. Um, you know that type of stuff. But it protects 
my printers. It protects me. It protects everybody else in my house. You know, but it's also, you know, take time to SSO your applications. You know, if you're going to be building your applications because you're going to want to use them later, you know, SSO your applications. It might be a little bit more of an inconvenience for you, but you know what? I think it's, it, a, it's, it's, it's a security thing, but it's also practice. Yeah. And, it, and it is teaching you how to set up things like that. Yeah. You know, and that that's the big goal. You know, the big goal in all of this is not to, you know, not do that, but it's, to, you know, for practice. Because yeah, if, people, is if people hack into your network, especially your 3D printer, for God's sakes, you know, the only what, what, they're, what they're trying to steal is your STL files. No. They're trying to steal your G-code. Or look for a way into or something else. Or look for a way into jump into a different jump box. Yeah, to, some, to something else. You know, and see if they can find out why you're 3D printing. Yeah. Why you're doing prototype parts, you know, yeah. at home or at work. Yeah, like God forbid you have that jumps around. You have a, 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 a like a let's say a couple GPUs set up on a, a Bitcoin, you know, mining. I'm not saying yeah. that you're still doing that. If you're still doing that, I, I apologize. You are not making profit. But <laughs> at, at this point, like it, it, if it jumps to that, then it's stealing your Bitcoin that it makes. Yeah, that's it. that's their Bitcoin. And you know, I'll say this. Also, if you're a company and you're running a guest email or guest uh, web service please use a different ISP split those things where they can't where there is no side door you're not on your same router you're on two different routers yeah um you know completely segregate your network versus somebody else's network and also do me a favor and hide your SSIDs because it it, nothing makes me laugh more than anything in the world when I go stay at a hotel because sometimes for work we travel a lot I'm seeing in a hotel, and it says, oh, cash register. <laughs> oh, here, let me just take your cash register do real not, quick do not and use. connect to that so I can steal your, you know, steal what you're doing in your cash register. No. Yeah, putting the you name know, do not use is not going to stop anyone. Right, exactly. You know, this That's, is for office. Okay? Yeah. Dude, turn that off. You know, it, you it's can still tie either. your computers to your, SSI, your SSID, even though it's not being shared. Yeah, you could still search for that. And, yeah, and it'll It's going to pop up. Yeah. It's going to be fine. You're going to be okay. No. You know, so stop sharing your SSID over the, the interwebs, mm-hmm. you know, in, in, in your own business. Because somehow all I got to do is, oh, cool, look, you have, I can, you, I can get access through here. I can go, I can go on my guest email and I can download my tools. So I don't have, you know, I didn't download all the, everything on my computer. Mm-hmm. And then I can, you know, just start hacking into each one of your networks when I'm staying in your hotel. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's not just hotels. That's your just the, 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 just the, the, example, the, the example. You know, doctor's offices are another big one. Y'all are HIPAA certified. That's y'all have y'all have more freaking cybersecurity resources and needs for a HIPAA for hospital doctor's office. Everything has to be encrypted. Yeah, you know, and you're leading yourself open for a target. Don't do that. You know, very bad, 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 bad things happen. You know, um, you know. I, I think the funniest thing I've ever seen was a. Um, was a government office. Yeah. You know, that had all the different offices had their own network SSID. Mm-hmm. And then you had the guest one next to it. And it's like, okay, cool. But they all were unsecure. <laughs> you know, so, so, anyway. <laughs> so, you have, so, so it's like, you know, like, okay. You know, so you go into the, the guest one. It's like, okay, cool. Are you a guest? Yes. Enter. Welcome to the internet. That's not. Well, that didn't help. That's not secure. <laughs> that's you know? not secure. <laughs> it, it's like it says we're collecting your, your IP address. I doubt that. No. You know, but it's like, it, then you bring it up their attention. Hey, guess what? Your network's unsecure. No. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, you may want to turn that off. Yeah, yeah, you should probably not. Broadcast. You know, and it, 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 you know, it's not federal government, it's municipality government. Um, however,. Tomato, tomato. Yeah, honestly, if if you leave yourself open that that like blatantly open, you can't be surprised that someone hacked you. Right. Oh, I don't know why my printer keeps sending random things. There's but, people that are hacking just 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 because. Yeah, just, and like I, so I have I, there's there's you know so back home um, there's uh, a lot of families that you know my family was were friends with we had. The Filipino American Club of Fayetteville, and we mm-hmm. uh, like a lot of those kids grew up their first generation here. Like their parents were, 
you know, immigrants, and then yeah, yeah. they grew up here. Um, one of those guys, uh, he's, he's going through college now, and he was talking to me about, he's doing cybersecurity, and he was mm-hmm. talking to me about just like a, like a home project that he did. He has a honeypot. Collecting people's information. Yeah. Yeah, don't Pe- do that. People that are, no, 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 people that are trying to hack in, it's like a, oh. it's a shell, so it's not yeah. an actual machine. People are trying to, uh, uh, they see his vulnerability, and they are just, Trying to connect to get in da- the data, and then then once they get in, they realize that it's not they're what trapped. they thought. They're yeah, so they're done. So he gets twenty thousand hits a day. Oh yeah. Now he also kind of broadcasted it because he wanted to see who would try to connect and st- tr- who wants to steal his data, right? Yeah. But at the same point, like you're getting that many, you're getting that many people a day trying to hack into your system because it looks insecure. Mhm. What if it was? What if it was that your your actual network? Yeah. That's 20,000 people with your data. Why do you think you get spam phone calls? Right. Exactly. Why do you think you get spam emails? Right. Yeah, cuz somewhere along the line you weren't safe. Like yeah, you something, did something is, is you open didn't. and you shouldn't be doing or that. Or someone anymore. sold your information and if you yep. are just you know, when you're at, every time you make an order online, what are you putting in? Right. You yourself, you yourself, are giving your information away. Oh yeah. And now it's like you know the thing is it's like you know thinking about you know unsecured networks and stuff like that. Growing up, oh, we may have had a few neighbors around us that you kind of wanted to teach a lesson to. Hmm. So and they were notorious for not disabling their home printer Wi-Fi network. Yeah. There's like four people around me that still have... I think I got a bunch around here too that I can still find. Um, yeah. And it's like, you know, the HP 35X1 or whatever. Or you know, laser jet. Sending you some you prints. Know, <laughs> laser jet, you know, laser jet 4.1 or something like that. So the only thing you do is connect to it and hit a couple print pages that says, please secure me, please secure me, please secure me. Hello. You yeah. know, and then you log off. Yeah. You know, and they start freaking out because they think their printer is freaking possessed by the freaking <laughs> alien life form that lives down the street. You know, little do they know that, you know, I can hit the, pr- I, I, you know, you start messing with it and, you know. That's very evil, but that's hilarious to me. It's just. That, but no, that's a good example, too, of how, how easy it is if, if you do not prepare yourself. Like, let's let's take in a different example. Mind you, I've done it for, a, for a, a Halloween prank before. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great way of, like. I see you. That's and creepy. And you're, you're printing that off or, hello, and you have it going over like 18 pages. Yeah, you should check the back door, right? Like, <laughs> did you lock the doors today? Like, and that would just, scare me. And it's just that type of stuff that you would do to somebody. And then at the end of it, you go, you left your printer unlocked. Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> but like, but, but, but we could even take it to a different, a different level. Like, so, like leaving a network unlocked for, oh, yeah. for everyone to get in. It's like just leaving your door open of your front house. Yeah, just come on in. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and then saying like I'm gonna go I'm gonna go to work for about eight hours. You go ahead, you guys have fun in there. Yeah. There's nothing blocking them anymore of like and you're showing them the way in. Right. And it's like if you think about it, there's unsecured Wi Fi networks inside people's houses. Yes. You know, you can you connect to that, then you go, Hey, let me do a, a port scan and just scan what's inside this house and what's available. Yeah, I, I'm just telling you. If you have an Eero, like it's just that's just a brand of router. Like, yeah. like if you have an Eero, I can download the Eero app. If you give, if I figure out what your password is, I can log in to your account. I can see your MAC addresses, your uh, IP addresses. Yeah. I could probably even get down to what your what what data you're pulling into it. Yeah. Like it gets to that point. Or I could just be, you know, mean and make uh, some restrictions on all your ports and block everything except for, you know, communication to me until you pay me. Yeah. <laughs> so, or I just set your password to something you don't know and then, you know, yeah, or you just have to waste buy your time. Yeah, or just waste your time so much so that you can't factory reset this or, or yeah, you got to start over. Yeah. But, like, at the end of the day, it's, it, these are not, they're not difficult things to do. Right. But... It's a common sense. Do you have thing. health insurance? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Maybe yeah. you should have some security. Do, do, okay, so you have health insurance. Do you go to the doctor every day? Nope. No. But you have health insurance so that when you do go to the doctor, 
You're covered. You're covered and, and you're protected. Right, exactly. You, you should have layers of security so that when someone does try to get into your account or your network or get your data, it's there. Not because everybody's trying every day. There, there's not 20,000 people trying to get to you know my data every day. Yeah. I don't have a machine set up vulnerable that's like broadcasting, hey, I'm vulnerable, right? Yeah. That So that's, that's why he's getting that many. But it's when you do that, like what you're saying, you put unsecure networks up, you're broadcasting my unsecureness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're going to get some people that are like, why not? Why, why yeah. don't I hack this guy? Yeah, why don't, why don't I mess with him? Yeah, why don't I teach him a lesson, by the way, that yeah. he's probably not going to even like think about. And this is the inception of ransomware. Right. He's got money. He'll pay me to get his stuff back then. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, you know, if you know people that have their networks that are unsecure like that, please tell them. Yeah. You know, don't just, you know, mess with them like I did. But the thing is, is, you know, eventually I would tell them, hey, guess what? Your network's unsecure. That well, was me. It's a lesson. You know, just to, me just to mess with them, you know. But the thing is, it's like with that, it was, hey, you know, secure this or turn this off. If you don't know how to do it, here, let me tell you. It's like there's been times of where, <clears throat> you know, I know... You know, friends who left their printers unlocked because they're the 100% easiest thing to get a hold of. Yeah. And so instead of being evil, I printed out the manual how to turn the Wi-Fi SSD off. You know, and... <laughs> They'll get the point. <laughs> They'll get the point. You know, yeah. and especially when you look at the, the, the paper level and you realize, cool, I got 100 G's to go. Yeah, this will be fun. <laughs> print it 100 times. You know, I'm going gonna, gonna, gonna to print it 20 times and make sure you get the idea. Mm-hmm. You know, and every single time I'm going to zoom further into that little how to turn the darn thing off article. Yeah, yeah until you figure it out. <laughs> and it's just, it's just how it goes, you know. But, you know, be nice to the ones around you. You know, help them out. Help them secure their stuff. You know, there should not be networks out there that are unsecure. I understand if you're dealing with elderly people that mm -hmm. may not always remember their passwords. And don't write them down. Rather be one. You know, write it down for them. I would say don't write it down. Put it in some type of application. Right, exactly. Don't uh, don't put it openly on your phone. Yeah. I cannot... Oh, my God. This is a pet peeve. I cannot count how many times that I see on a Post-it note or your iPhone's notepad all of your passwords. Yeah. That is like not having a password in the first place. Yeah, you can get password vaults for iPhone. You can also get password vaults for a lot of things. Yeah. You can also get password vaults for your for your computers. And, you know, it's like... And actually, iPhone has a password instead vault of, built in. Instead of remembering 30, 40 passwords, you remember one very hard password, yeah. and it'll get all your passwords. Just, it's better for everyone. And the thing is, is, you know, even if you're going to leave computers on the other side of that firewall, unsecure, like not be able to... Lo not with a login or whatever, like an auto-login password... You know, protect the way in. So, you know, your loved ones are protected. Yeah. We, we don't have somebody trying to steal somebody's social security or their, or their life savings and stuff like that. We don't want that. Um, you know, protect them. You know, protect them at all costs. Um, you know, the, the greatest generation needs our help now. Yeah, that's the most infuriating thing if I was, uh, you know, if I was... So, I, I was barely barely around i was like very young when when you know before computers and like the early stages of those things but like it's it, it would be very frustrating for me to work my entire life only for it to be snatched out underneath me because i didn't understand technology and and a lot of people you know of my age grew up in it so it was part of our life and if you if i knew that it was part of your life and you did not help me in that case yep that's that's kind of one of the worst things. Like, yeah, I'll physically haunt you. It, it's, it's, um, yeah, no. Listen, I will be, I will become a ghost, and I will come back and try to give everybody your passwords. <laughs> like, we're gonna do that. Either that, or I will sign you up for every single spam inbox I can find. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll go to the flea market whenever we have, whenever they have some type of show, and you're getting so many sweepstakes signed up for. They're gonna call you yep. about all the timeshares, all the, all the jet skis, <laughs> everything. Yeah, your email will be it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, that that's just, you know, one of those things, you know. But it's just, you know, protect the other birds, protect the loved ones, you know. Yeah. Or if, you know, if you don't protect them and karma comes and happens to find you the hard way, then you earned it. Yeah, I hate to be on the receiving end, to be honest. That's This is why we kind of talk about it, like, here. Right. I, I, I hate to be, like, we hear about it, like, um, 
there's a famous quote from The Office. Identity theft's not a joke. Of course it's not a joke. Yeah. But if you leave yourself open, identity theft's not, not a joke. It's real. Yep. And you're losing all your money. Exactly. <laughs> so, and, and I've, I've had... How, how many... I've had to uh, apply for fraud a few times where I did that once where, because my car got stolen at the gas station. Yeah, exactly. My my PayPal, my PayPal. I got a six hundred dollar charge, two hundred something, three times hit all at once, and they're like, "Hey, did you make this purchase?" No, I don't. I don't know what this is. I haven't made a purchase this size. Period. Like, yeah. I need that back. That's my money for my rent. Right. Like. Yeah. Boom. That has happened to me specifically. So you, you probably know a few people that have been hit with identity. I've been hit with it myself. Said. Yeah, exactly. Like, I mean, everybody listening also probably knows at least one or two people, like, immediately offhand that, that have been hit like yeah. that. And, and it's, it's, partially, it's partially an insecure network, and the other half uh, not secure security, like, proceed, like passwords or, or let's say... Uh, they didn't have the the, the two factor authentication because I think I remember back at that time, this was right around when two factor started becoming a thing. Mm-hmm. Now it's pretty much standard across the board. Yeah, now it's required by yeah. people. Yeah, yeah. So, but before it, I, it never had the like it sent a, um, it sent a, a, a email to you that said, "Hey, you logged in. That's it." Yeah. And if you didn't, it's like, oh, if you didn't log in, change your password. That's that is all you could do. Right. But there's many more tools that you can use nowadays. Like Exactly. So, so make sure you take advantage of those things and and make sure you teach people about it when you can cuz cuz cybersecurity it, at this point just like, you know, your personal security of your family and loved ones, yeah. it's 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 the not yeah, it, it it's not a option anymore. Yeah. Like you, you need you need to know this. You know, you it's like one of the things we, we like to say, you know, like we say at work or that to post it all around at work. You know, we, we can't have security without you. Um, it's true. And, you know, it's like you are the one who, you know, makes this happen. You are the ones who, you know, kind of go through that process. You know, and the thing is, is it's one thing I can't stand. I know we're going over time a little bit. Is when people says, well, I don't need to care about cyber security. It's not my job field. No, it isn't your job field. You just don't know it yet. You yeah, know, do you it, like using that computer? And, it, and if you're <laughs> caught freaking violating those terms and conditions... Guess what? Your job will no longer be your job, and you'll be happily looking for something else to do. Mm-hmm. You know, so it, it's one of those things. If you're an automation engineer, or if you're a regular engineer, or if you're, you know, um, working out in like oil fields or something like that, your security matters. Yes. You know, um, you know, it's especially if you're dealing with bigger technology. So you know, protect that. Protect what you're doing. Protect yourself and protect your company. But you know, in theory, you know, to protect your own, you know, for rival reason. Yeah, you don't. You don't leave your life savings out on the front step, right? Yeah. You, so, like, why would you leave the keys to it out in the open? Exactly. And, you know, I, th- I think that, you know, as we as we look forward, you know, we can see some, some other stuff that, you know, we'll have to get into eventually. You know, and it's just, you know, always secure your stuff. You know, secure your network, yeah. secure your computers, um, your cell phones, stuff like that. You know, if you can go to facial recognition or thumbprints or, or something like that, go that route. You know, yeah. or if you really want to get really high tech, you go back down to a flip phone. Yeah, I, you know? I, some people are scared about biometrics, and I, and I and I understand because like you're like I don't want people to have that. That is a double edged sword. Yeah, because that yeah people won't have it, but also you're more you are more susceptible. You have less security. Well, the thing is, I'll say this: you don't want people to have your biometrics. I'm going to tell you right now: there's more people that have your biometrics than you know what you have. Mm-hmm. Because guess what? I every time you apply for a uh, passport, I got your fingerprints. I have your picture. I can now map your your picture to your fingerprints. Yep. And then an old database is still run on the back of a freaking um um uh, old um um uh mainframe. Yeah. You know, doing its job. You know, I have all the pictures that people have ever taken inside airports. You're on camera ninety five percent of the time. Yeah. You're being recognized ninety five percent of the time being, you know, tracked against the database. Street street light street cameras like yeah. that are that are, you know what I'm saying? Like anytime take... you've ever been involved with law enforcement. Yeah. They have your data. Yeah. You know, it's it's the you know, NCIS. It's it's in the, the, the national criminal the national criminal justice information system. Yeah. You know, it's there. 
Yeah, and they need to be more secure than anything we've ever had, too. Right, So exactly. they do that security for, for us as well. Like, Right. They protect us, we protect them, we protect ourselves. Yes. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's just, you know, we got to remember that. You know, security can't start without you. And, you know, we really will, you know, need to get into that, get people behind that, get people interested in it. You know, protect your stuff. If you have any different ways that you like to protect your gear, let us know. We think it's kind of interesting. We want to, yeah. um, you know, don't tell us specifics. But, you know, let us know, like, hey, I use, you know, different different type of, you know, uh, hey, shaws yeah, and stuff like, like that. Or, feet, no. <laughs> or stuff like that, <laughs> yeah, you know. Seriously. If you have any, you know, funny stories, freaking let us know. You know, we're yeah. more than welcome to hear them. Yeah. And, you know, we hope to, if you have any questions, mm-hmm. let us know. Maybe we can jump in there and give you a hand. Yeah. You know, just kind of give you some ideas. But, you know, that's enough of my rambling. So, you know, I'm going to turn it over to John for, you know, our parting thought. And, and uh, you know, we'll see you all later. <laughs> Hope y'all have a good one. Uh, thank you again for listening. I can't thank y'all enough. I, I, I see it every time I look at the statistics, and I, I kind of brag about it all the time. Mm-hmm. We never thought we'd be where we're at. You know, I thank y'all. Hopefully, we can meet some of y'all in person one of these days. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, I'll turn it over to John. Y'all have yeah. a good one. Um. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, Echo and, Echo and Nick, I, I, I appreciate uh, everyone listening. Like, it, the, this is information that, you know, everyone needs, it's, it's not every day that you have someone that's trying to better you and, and also doing it without, you know, expecting a payment back, right? You should just, you, you should take the knowledge, you know, do with it what you will, but at the end of the day, we want to promote well-being and we want you to protect yourself and others. Um, so, uh, one, one of my things are like a final thought as Nick was saying, is like, you, you know, that we're, we're getting ever more connected to the digital world, right? Like, Metaverse oh might be falling a bit flat on its face right now, but, yeah. like, you think about a lot of other things that fell flat on their face when they first came out. Like, people laughed at Apple when they were trying to get their iPhone out, yep. right? Now, I bet you most of y'all have an iPhone, right? So, like, these are things that may sound outlandish and probably don't do well in the beginning, but... I'm not trying to be the guy that got his identity stolen on the metaverse. Right. <laughs> so, right? That's that's one of the biggest things. If you get your real ID stolen in the fake universe, <laughs> y'all did something special with that. That is just something that would be so ironic yeah. that it, it would be a funny story. But I'm not saying that that's happened to me or anybody that I know. But, like, don't be that guy. If it does, we'll tell you. Yeah, I would tell you, to be honest. That's hilarious. But, but just as we're getting ever more connected to, you know, each other and people across the globe, like, do yourself a favor, protect yourself so you don't have long-term repercussions from, you know, someone taking your money. Like, you worked hard for your money, you worked hard for, your information is important to you, this is why it's called personally identifiable information, and it needs to be kept secret, because anybody can act as you. So, you work hard to, you know, create your, um, your, let's say, digital footprint, protect it. Please protect it. Um, Yeah, and again, guys, I can't thank you enough. Thank you for listening. We'll see you next week. Thank you for listening to the Tech at Lunch podcast, where we hope you learned something about tech during your break or during your lunchtime. If you did, please give us a follow to prevent missing future episodes. If you have any ideas or something you want to hear or learn about, please send us a show idea to podcast at vulcanora.com. Hope you have a good rest of the day and continue learning.